I sent an email out about this saying, balancing effort and grace. And I've had various thoughts about, I, I know the, ex I could say a bunch of words to you and that would be lovely and you may or may not really have a conceptual understanding of what I'm saying or it may ring true to you from your experience but it's still me saying words in your mind thinking about it so my goal is always that you walk out the door with an experience of something that you have had your own ahas from your experience that might be totally different than any words I could say or, or point you to so I thought of what I wanted to do and I thought I think of you or uh, you know we're all the same thing but the part of everything that is these activities uh, <laughs> in terms of say it really truthfully um, I thought what I want you to how I can help you walk out the door with a experiential feeling of what I'd like to give you a taste of and and if you've been to these you know that I've never done the same thing twice I don't think ever I don't think I've tried I've tried to do I, it's same with sculptures you try to do the same one again and you can't and I think that's good I think that's real I think that's um, who we are in this moment's different than who we were when the last thing got made so we are creating this together but uh, what inspired me the thought I had um, I and I started to tell people earlier I just was one of 20 meditators who were selected to go to Harvard Medical School for a study they were doing on uh, what happens in the brain during uh, meditation specifically the meditation techniques of Shinzen Young and they had a specific subset of those which I'm not uh, at liberty to, to say until a, a paper's written it's you know science and they have it different way to do it but um, and it doesn't matter really what but they had uh, specific ways of focusing the mind that they wanted to know what parts of the brain got activated and it's the beginning of research and study that could totally transform and change potentially uh, this process of evolving of, of and maybe at some point probably after my lifetime there will be times where we don't have to log in these hours of meditation or there's something we can do with the brain directly that will help people experience freedom easily and wouldn't that be a gift so this this is kind of gr this was some ground level exciting research because my my teacher Shinzen Young and his techniques are kind of designed in a sense for this he breaks all experience into visual auditory and somatic and those correspond to parts of the brain and so it was a very exciting thing to do now in and and it was a wonderful experience and I'm not going to sit here and tell you about what I did on my meditation medical study vacation but in preparing for it they told us what we were going to have to do so you're in an MRI for three hours and there's four different rounds of uh, 32 minutes and they have to do a structural scan first so, but you're in there for a while and during it there were going to be times where we knew we were going to have to be moving our focus on cue to different things so when I was preparing for this at first I thought I was going to have to keep my mind on something without moving for 30 minutes and that the scan was going to know when my <laughs> mind wandered so and I was going I'm a meditation teacher I gotta get my chops up and, and a couple of people said well if anyone can do it you can and I go don't you're raising the bar really high you know um, because we've all had periods of high concentration where we can sit for very long periods of time but that's where we get on to also effort and grace. I've kind of fallen into those as opposed to I'm not one of the breath at the tip of my nose for two hour people. I'm just, I like it to be more interesting. But um, regardless of that, uh, it turns out we were going to do it in shorter segments of time. That was quite doable. So then it became a kind of fun game. And so when I was preparing to go, I had, oh, I don't have my iPad here. There's an insight timer you can get on your phones and iPads. It's a little bell that goes off and you can have three bells. You can have different sounds of bells. Maybe a bell will sound like this. Maybe a bell will sound like this. Well, not with that thing. Um, but, and you can set it 
for however long you want it. You can set it for little bells to go off in between. So I started in my preparation for this, setting it for 90 minutes, that's usually, and I'd have it go off every five minutes. And so every five minutes, that would be my cue to change techniques. And I discovered something really wonderful in this and in the MRI, because in the MRI is a different experience. You can prepare, it's like you're preparing for, oh, I don't know, uh, seeing something or eating something until you see it or eat it or do it, you don't really know what it is. I had done a, a study at UCLA on pain, so there, I did have a previous history of my brain being studied in an MRI, but um, not for three hours. Um, but the, in, the, in the practice of this shifting my focus, now here's where I don't know exactly how I'm going to say this. Um, I had insight into ease and grace. We will effort and focus on something, and then we'll take a period of time to not focus, to rest, to have ease. When you have it, boom, on cue, focus. Boom, on cue, <laughs> don't focus. What it creates is a kind of elasticity and strength and agility and flexibility that I found not only great fun, but familiar because I've been an acting teacher for 25 years, I think, since the late 80s, however long that is. And an exercise that I developed for actors, it's not common at all, is something I called colors. And it would be where if an actor came and he was good and truthful but kind of boring, he was like, I, I, I was teaching in my art studio at the time, and, and I said, you know, it's kind of like you're only painting with blue and purple. You need some yellow and red on your palette, you know, to paint with. So I created an exercise that then I developed over the next decade and refined in certain ways. But basically it started out with something I called colors where I'd say you need to stretch your range in a fun way and I made them shift instantly from one to the other. And I started with what I called um, uh, primary colors or they were big things so you had to do laughter, rage, depression, uh, huge things and shift instantly from one to another and then you'd go to regular more regular kind of emotions and then you get into what I called pastel colors the difference between nervousness and shyness you know subtle 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 the different and I would make them have to fully go to this emotion they'd have to fully go to it feel it in the body the whole body they couldn't be sitting here like this going I am so mad right well, the body's kind of saying something else, right? So we had to kind of get the whole body into it. And then they had to, on a dime, go from that to laughter, from that to depression. So it would be something like, oh, this will be, I'm going to freak you out now, all right? So it would be something like uh, laughing and going, <laughs> store the other day. <laughs> okay, you get it? And what this did for actors, and I've taught this, it's my, I developed the technique, there's no acting school that has it, but what I found it gave actors this, it was the ultimate warm-up, it gave them this flexibility and range, and that Turning on the dime also helped with um, a specificity, uh, like comedy, for example, is a, a turning on a dime. You can go, <laughs> huh? Right? It's a f that funny shift was really important. So this one exercise gave actors this strength and agility. And so as I was doing this, back to the Harvard study, as I was doing this five minute, I thought, oh, this is like colors. It's kind of giving this, ooh. Now we're going to do this. Boom. Now I'll do this. Boom. And it becomes kind of a game. But unlike colors, I was balancing doingness with not doingness. <coughs> and what that did 
was instead of when we stop, it's settling. You know, it takes some minutes. Everything's been doing, and then it just settles down, right? You want to just be in there? He just doesn't know. Um, instead of it being, hi, I'm doing, I'm doing, I've stopped, okay, let me settle. What my experience was is when I focus, because it's only five minutes or less, give that your all. It's not like, oh, I've got to be here for 45 minutes on the breath, right? Give it your all. And then when you go, boom, do nothing, it was like a slingshot thrusting me down into a different things. In the MRI, I was in protoplasm. But, you know, whatever. But I found it to be a... I had been doing this for a while leading up to the MRI. And the MRI has an advantage is because the whole environment supports the focus in on you. You've got everything. You've got a magnet stronger than... Is it 3,000 times stronger than... Oh, I can't remember. But a lot of focus all about this. So the whole environment and you're tied down and there's a cage on your head and you know, you're know you just all propped in there without moving for uh, three hours. So that, that actually made it easier as opposed to, oh, there's a dog and there's water and there's puppies and you know, colors and leaves and things that, that take us away. But I wanted to bring this way of exercising in today and I decided to call it I said hmm, what would I call that and I thought short interval training SIT <laughs> that good mm -hmm. sit yeah. short interval training and then I thought interval training surely someone has that like swimmers or runners or something so today just before I left I went and picked up uh, Brian today, but before I left, real quick, I thought, oh, I have to go online to see if there is short interval training somewhere before I declare it my, you know, I'm creating this. And there isn't short interval training, but there's something called interval training that runners do that actually is about running and dis uh, running quite intensely for 45 seconds and then stopping for a minute. And then running, so it is this, it is this balancing of effort and ease. So I like that. They don't call it short, they call it fast and slow. You can, do, you can do it fast and slow, but it's just called interval training, from what I saw in the first three pages of Google. But, so I'm going with short interval training because then I get sit, and that just causes all sorts of pleasant sensations. Um, all right. Um, and I thought it was a way to develop... I was also thinking, and I do this every time I do a Sunday class, I thought, okay, what skills do I have that if I could give them to somebody would be the most helpful for them? And I thought, this short little way to do it probably has the best skills I have. And, and it's just a structure. So what we do today, it's not going to matter what meditations you plug in. I'll even have a place where, your choice, do whatever you want here. You know, but I'm gonna, and I'm not gonna do five minute intervals. I'm gonna do some short or some long, but it'll be between one and five minutes, every every little interval, and I'll give a suggestion, and I might guide through one or something like that. But that's what I, I wanted to play with today. <laughs> Everyone's like, will it hurt? <laughs> <laughs> do I get a, do I get a ribbon when I'm done?